Sex Science, Reducing Love and Sex to Biology and Hormones. Chapter 1. The Brain Chemistry of Sex and Love. The Chemistry of Love and Sex 1. We feel infatuation when neurons in the limbic system, our emotional core, become saturated or sensitized by P and slash or other brain chemicals, and stimulate the brain. Michael Leibovitz, The Chemistry of Love, 1983. A man and woman in love each release loving chemicals and hormones. This hormonal release has the effect of uniting the couple in an intimate bond so that they share their lives together, helping each other and helping raise their children. In a nutshell, love releases oxytocin and endorphins, sex releases testosterone and endorphins. Women value love more, men value sex more so the difference between men and women has a lot to do with what rewards these two hormones give them. Men want that orgasm. Women want to feel affection. We are not animals but we are partially so. Sometimes, we think with our sex organs and hormones but we prize ourselves as civilized beings of reason who know how to control ourselves. Nevertheless hormones and emotions often rule our actions. As children, many of us are loved greatly by our parents and the search for love in adulthood is a deep, often subconscious desire to recover that parental love through another adult person like our parents. The endorphin theory of love states that when two people fall in love, the body will release endorphins. This accounts for the pleasurable feelings of being in love. In 1975, endorphin receptors were discovered by two independent teams of researchers, John Hughes and Hans Kosterlitz in Scotland and Ruby Samantoff and Solomon Snyder in the US. In 1976, American neuroscientist Candace Pert and Nancy Ostrowski did experiments where they decapitated rats while they were having sex then examined their brains to find that endorphin levels shot up over 200% while they were having sex as opposed to normal living. In the 1983 book The Chemistry of Love, psychiatrist Michael Leibovitz outlined the relationship between endorphins and love. In the 1996 book The Alchemy of Love by physician Teresa Crenshaw stated that endorphins flood the brain during sex and love. Studies on monogamy in mammals focus on endorphins, vasopressin, and oxytocin. Endorphins are neurotransmitters in the brain. Oxytocin acts to control uterine contractions, cervical softening and penile erection in the male. Other oxytocin receptive nerves lessen pain. Vasopressin typically aids in memory. Studies on two different types of voles, prairie voles and montane voles, done on both male and females as distinct groups concluded that the difference between being monogamous or promiscuous behavior was where oxytocin receptors are in the brain. In the prairie vole, oxytocin receptors were found in different locations of the brain than the montane vole. Researchers have therefore theorized that the section of the brain enabling monogamy is present in the area of the brain possessing the receptors of oxytocin and vasopressin in prairie voles. You fall out of love when your mate no longer gives you the endorphin rush you used to get from him or her. Of course there's magic to the process of falling in love but what it triggers in the body as far as releasing hormones go is universal. Everybody releases the same hormones when falling in love. Despite the evidence suggesting we are partially ruled by involuntary forces of attraction, both physiologically through the release of hormones in response to events in our environments and because of subconscious ghosts hidden in our minds from our childhoods, we are still civilized beings and control ourselves through rational action in the civilized world but when we feel true love, when that lightning bolt of love at first sight gushes through our souls, it's all about hormones, namely p. phenylethylamine an amphetamine-like molecule that speeds up the flow of information between nerve cells and whips the brain into an immediate frenzy of excitement and oxytocin which is termed the love chemical, the chemical that makes you want to cuddle, hug and love. This is what science has thus far isolated as the physiological building blocks of love and romance and just like a drug addict needs his coke or junk, many people evaluate their degree of being in love by how intense they experience this love rush in the presence of their lover but sadly, in all but a very few cases, just like your regular drug addict, resistance is built up. 
the intensity goes down progressively after the first dose which is why many people can't be monogamous and need more fixes of the love drug by getting new excitements with new lovers which triggers the release of both P and oxytocin at high levels all over again. Monogamous lovers can achieve this if they're adventurous, creative lovers who can keep stimulating and inspiring each other in the bedroom. After the initial spray of firework hormones, love moves into another stage physiologically and psychologically. This is an attachment stage characterized hormonally by the release of a neurotransmitter different from P and oxytocin, a different, calmer morphine-like substance called endorphins which help with long-term bonding as opposed to the quick, hot from the fire passions of oxytocin and P. Love becomes more stable and substantive. In essence, there are two stages to love. The initial, hot spray where two people are attracted to each other and lead up to sex. The attachment that comes over time where they feel comfortable with each other and decide to be together and raise a family. People that constantly need new lovers or new sexual scenarios are called sex and love addicts who are believed, underneath this craving, to have a need for a p-fix. When given antidepressant drugs, this craving goes away somewhat. They're calmer and more monogamy prone. Love starts with an intense, exhilarating situation which partially causes and is partially caused by the involuntary release of P and oxytocin but is maintained by culturing the ability to be calm, peaceful and feel secure with your lover without the need for explosive fireworks all the time. This is the mechanics of love and sex as bare as you can strip them down for the human being. Prolactin is called the hormone of satiation. When you've had enough sex or love, the body releases prolactin which tells to cool it, lay back and get some rest. After orgasm dopamine levels fall sharply. Prolactin levels rise. In sexually satiated rats, serotonin and endorphin levels rise. This decreases dopamine and raises prolactin levels. Oxytocin levels fall after orgasm but cuddling may help to counter this drop and sustain oxytocin levels. It takes time for prolactin levels to go down before you get horny again. The chemistry of love and sex too. The female brain is predominantly hardwired for empathy. The male brain is predominantly hardwired for understanding and building systems. Simon Baron Cohen, The Essential Difference, The Truth About the Male and Female Brain. Scientists have documented an astonishing array of structural, chemical, genetic, hormonal, and functional brain differences between women and men. For example, in the brain centers for language and learning women have 11% more neurons than men. The principal hub of both emotion and memory formation the hippocampus is also larger in the female brain, as is the brain circuitry for language and observing emotions in others. Luan Brizendine, The Female Brain Animals and humans are genetically programmed to secrete endorphins in situations of social comfort such as love, affection, and sex so love and sex make us feel good by releasing feel-good hormones in the body. The initial feelings of attraction are heavily associated with the B-phenylethylamine, P, norepinephrine. Norepinephrine triggers the breakdown of glycogen and triacylglycerols, which gives the body a boost of energy. The stimulant functions by binding to the surface of liver cells, signaling them to produce cyclic AMP, CAMP. This molecule then breaks the active parts of protein kinase A, PKA, a way enabling them to alter certain proteins. P makes people feel happy. Some drugs appear to inhibit P. Lithium, an antidepressant, blocks the manic highs associated with the stimulant. Many patients report they are less likely to be attracted to someone while taking lithium. A pill or injection can make you less susceptible to infatuation or love. Chocolate contains P, however, the digestive system breaks down phenylethylamine. Studies in people found that eating up to 2 pounds of chocolate a day causes no increase of P in urine or the bloodstream. People in the initial stages of attraction have increases in both. The brain doesn't just think. It feels. All emotions start in the brain. When you see someone you're attracted to, the brain shoots off fireworks called endorphins. When you're in pain because of losing a loved one, the brain doesn't release hormones that make you feel good. 
sex and love and thoughts of them cause the brain to release euphoric producing chemicals. Some people have the ability to reach orgasm with the mind alone without touching their genitals. We all can get aroused just by thinking about sex and love. There are two main classes of hormones in a woman's body, estrogens, and progesterons with some testosterone which is the hormone that makes them horny just like it does for men. The male has testosterone. Both men and women have GnRH hormone, which tells the pituitary to release a specific sex hormone. Everybody has got their own preferences but the physiological result is always the same. We're hardwired to get aroused when we someone of the opposite sex we're attracted to. The limbic system, the lower, oldest part of the brain that controls emotion goes into overload and releases feel-good endorphins. Then your higher brain, the cerebral cortex, kicks in and says cool it. If you ever see somebody for the first time that rocks your world or watch somebody seeing somebody for the first time who rocks their world, you can see these two worlds collide. You get all excited like your eyes are popping out of your head as in a comic then 7 seconds you catch yourself and try to act normal again but you can't dispute it or stop it. It happened to me a few dozen times. Some people just make your brain chemistry revert back to primitive instincts, kinda like wow, she's some beautiful. Our hypothalamic brain cells secrete about 30 or 40 chemicals messengers that affect our emotions and behavior. Don't underestimate your primitive animal brain. Your higher thinking faculties keep it in check but it's still better to be more natural and emotional than logical, intellectual, and repressed. Love is a drug slash the love hormone explosion. Love releases hormones and neurotransmitters that make you feel really good just like cocaine does. You develop a tolerance to both love and cocaine. You need more and more. This is why love addicts want to keep falling in love with different people all the time. Loving the same person is not enough. You get bored. It's like the Coolidge effect for sex. You get bored of the same partner. You need other people in order to replicate the love hormone explosion. While you are under the influence or spell of love, you are not rational. You will do stupid things. The most basic stupid thing new lovers do is that they put their lover on a pedestal and trust them. Many women trust their new male lover and lend or give him money which they never get back. If any new lover asks you for money, that's a sign to get out now. No noble person asks a new lover for money. I need excitement which is why I do drugs sometimes, intense physical activities, watch porn and do stupid sexual activities like go out to meet strangers and street walkers sometimes. The average woman looks for excitement through love. The average guy likes love but likes porn too. Love is not that important as long as porn arouses him. Porn is big business because a guy can always watch new porn and get aroused. Human beings are generally not rational and level-headed. They are emotional. This is an unsafe way to live. Slow down. Think things through. Be cynical. Never put a halo on anyone. They're just human with the nature to be aware from selfish to evil like everybody. Do not let your emotions guide you. Think about what is going on before you act. Nobody can really make you happy because you alone must earn your sense of self-respect and well-being. A lover is nice but another person is not the key for happiness. The key is to honor who you were born to be by nature by releasing that natural energy inside of yourself to the point where you feel proud of who you are. Do this every day. If you try too hard in any relationship and give out more love and effort than you get back, the other lover might feel smothered or feel that you are weak for being too dependent. If they think you are weak, they start to have contempt for you. You cannot make somebody love you by trying to shower them with love, money, and gifts. They have to love of their own free will which is why you should not try too hard. Be a good lover but don't cross the line into unrequited, excessive loving actions. Be reasonable, not love addicted. When there is true admiration and respect, the players know it. They don't have to knock themselves out trying to seduce their lover. 
love science from interesting engineering.com slash love hyphen actually hyphen science hyphen has hyphen a hyphen lot hyphen to hyphen say hyphen about hyphen the hyphen complicated hyphen world hyphen of hyphen love there is always some madness in love i think that's what shakespeare called it madness in the modern world i call it a temporary mental illness i been deeply in love then a year or so later i thought what was that all about falling under someone's spell like that a b and d women are great seducers as far as pheromones go some people say they're real some say they're not i tend to think they're real women release something that seduces guys love is a hormonal release of oxytocin p adrenaline estrogen testosterone pheromones etc love can be broken down into lust attraction attachment love starts in the hypothalamus which stimulates production of the sex hormones testosterone and estrogen which increase libido attraction centers around reward pathways the honeymoon phase feels exciting and thrilling the chemicals most responsible are dopamine norepinephrine and serotonin produced in the hypothalamus dopamine releases when we do things that feel good Dopamine and norepinephrine are released during attraction. The hormones associated with feelings of attachment are oxytocin and vasopressin. Oxytocin is released during feelings of love. Falling in love elicits the same euphoric feeling as doing cocaine. Pleasure is a generic drug. Like real drugs, love fades then you have to find new stuff to replace what you have built a tolerance to like a new lover. Love hormones are healthy. Love itself can be dangerous. I've seen TV shows like Who the Hell Did I Marry and other shows on the Investigative Discovery Network about people killing their lovers and spouses. Chapter 2 The Brain Chemistry of Sex and Love 2 Science of Love Here's what psychology says about love. Basic attraction is based on the simplest things. You have to live close to the person or people you like because if you live far, it's too hard to stay in contact. You need repeated interactions to get to know each other. You have to be basically alike, to have the same culture, religion, and dreams. You have to be physically attractive and attracted to the other person. Psychobabalists say that your ability to love others are formed early in life. I don't necessarily believe this. Certainly some kid raised in a loveless orphanage has some attachment problems but people overcome this all the time. Love can take hold at any age. That's why it's revolutionary. There is always a story around about some nerdy loser meeting some girl who loves love him, becoming a hero in the process like Bambi or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Normal people naturally have a temperament that is on the spectrum somewhere between all cuddly and aloof. You can't fight your natural ability to express love. If you're naturally distant, you can try to be more intimate but you are what you are. In our culture, men are taught to be unemotional so a lot of them end up that way even though they feel all the emotions with deep intensity. Your culture could determine your love style. I saw thousands of love movies and TV shows as a young guy. Most were about skinny blondes as the ideal beauty but now that I'm over cultural brainwash, I know I'm attracted to athletic, dark-haired girls with big tits. I also like thoughtful girls over loud mouths acting as they say, all bubbly. To me, it's fake shit. No one is like that in real life, 24 hours a day. Monogamy was assumed to be the righteous path but I now know I could easily love several women if I had the money to take care of them. The thing that separates romantic love from other types of liking and loving is a natural sense of urgency and passion. You feel drawn to this other person and want to touch them and make love to them. To me, this is when I know it's real. On the dating shows I see on TV, I don't see a lot of this. It's more like arrangements and barter like I can offer this and that, you will have children and raise them as part of the arrangement but there won't be hot love. We will like each other but there will always be distance. There is an active urgency about love, and hate, that is not there in liking, and disliking. There is also almost always hot intimacy. What is love and why does it seem to be qualitatively different from liking? 
Much of the animal kingdom has peer bonding but it's temporary. The guy hangs around to help raise the kid then he's gone to find another female. Males are wired to impregnate as many women as possible. The female wants a guy to help her raise her kids. Men prefer fertile, younger women. Women prefer high status, wealthy guys. Young girls start out with puppy love, having fantasies about some kid in school or some manufactured teen pop star idol. I won't name one because by the time you read this book, he will be a has-been. Women over about the age of 33 know that they aren't the prettiest anymore and know that if a guy is good looking and slash or has money, he will do what he wants. By then, they will take a boring middle-aged guy if he will be loyal and have some money to support them. This is the way it works in real life. I see the young arrogant girls around but I rarely see a 33-year-old single girl acting arrogant. Women know a lot of their beauty game is gone by 33. They don't care about the cute pretty boy anymore. They want a guy with a job who won't he stray. First love as far as romance goes in the West is usually infatuation with a pop culture person on TV. Love involves emotion but takes action, nurturance, and commitment. There is a high emotional passion to the state of being in love but this often fades in romantic love unlike with love for friends and pets. The question is why? I think it's because the guy has a secret sex drive that he's feeding one way or another. He is constantly bombarded with lusty thoughts all the time for women other than his wife. This is a part of the human condition nobody but me seems to want to talk about. In other cultures, they openly marry for reasons other than love like for money, status, and security but we in the West claim we want love. At least the movies and TV shows make it seem that way. I say it might be true for women under 33 but after that, they're looking for a guy who can offer financial security and slash or simply be there to help raise the kids. Passion fades. The guy always has that lusty sex drive that never stops. Even if his body can't do it, his mind is still lusting. It is rare to find a relationship in which the sexual attraction remains at the intensity that it began with but some people say it does with them. What is the recipe for a successful marriage or long-term partnership? The people have to like each other, like being together and like to make small talk together. They confide in each other. They seek advice from each other. If they argue, it's about a specific issue not about hating each other. They value the relationship. They genuinely listen to each other. They live in the present and do not remind each other of foibles from the past. They don't attempt to play own upmanship with each other. They both try to resolve problems with each other. They both actively work with raising the child or children. In modern Western society, we look for somebody like us who we partner up with to share a future life with common dreams together. How far does this go? How much of my sexual fantasies can I share with any girl? They are always there. Let's say I want to live on a tropical isle and have three kids. That is our common dream and vision but what do we do every day to feel a strong, loving connection besides sex? How do you share yourself to unite with another person and become kindred spirits and soulmates? Is it possible to have a soulmate or are there always differences that come up? How deeply can two separate and autonomous persons go in the love bond? How much should do people be alike versus how much should they be different in order to be exciting to one another? Should this be an issue at all? Personally, I want someone like me with no differences. A difference is a hassle not some beautiful thing I want to discover. Oxytocin is the bonding, cuddling hormone. On a hormonal level, women release oxytocin right after they give birth and also when they see other babies which aren't theirs which enhances the maternal infant bond while men in general only release oxytocin when in the presence of their own babies who they have fathered lending credence to the fact that women are generally more loving than men overall simply because they release more of the love chemical oxytocin. When people are attracted to each other and fall in love, both release oxytocin which makes them feel good, enhances sexual arousal and helps bring on orgasm. Oxytocin can be generated by both physical and emotional cues, anything to make you feel attracted and loving towards the other person, smell, touch, a fantasy thought, 
a soft voice, a beautiful chest, etc. Men release a lot of oxytocin around the time of orgasm but women usually produce more overall which could explain why they want after play or hugging before and after sex and are capable of multiple orgasms. Oxytocin is the hormone which is produced in the body of the mother during childbirth and offers a host of bonding benefits to the mother and child. A 20-second hug is said to release the love drug oxytocin that bonds humans at a chemical level. The release of oxytocin helps two lovers bond. Some scientists are studying it to see how it helps overcome shyness and social anxiety. Whatever you are afraid of starts off as a thought, which generates a feeling. Scientists who injected or sprayed people with oxytocin found that it made them more relaxed and more at ease with other people. Oxytocin is being studied as a potentially useful treatment in managing the symptoms of autism. Nasdaq, the biotech company is trying a synthetic oxytocin treatment for autism. There is a theory going around that babies who aren't loved or cuddled enough don't produce much oxytocin during these early years which makes it very difficult for them to love others. They say this creates either very shy people or psychopaths or both. Increasing levels of another neuropeptide vasopressin, may also be linked to the management of autism. A team of researchers led by Ina Schneiderman of the Gonda Brain Sciences Center of Israel's Bar Ilan University have published a study examining the role oxytocin plays in the early stages of romantic relationships. They found a strong link between lasting relationships and high levels of the hormone. Psychcentral.com slash lib slash 2008 slash about hyphen oxytocin. En.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash oxytocin. Hugthemonkey.com. Arkaelitka.de slash oxytocin2 underscore us.html. Humanchemistry.net en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash nervous underscore system. YourAmazingBrain.org.uk slash lovesx slash sciencelove.htm The Hormones of Sex slash Sex Hormones You can't underestimate hormones. Testosterone and estrogen make you horny. Dopamine, norepinephrine, and phenylethylamine help us fall in love. Oxytocin, serotonin, and vasopressin give us affection, intimacy and triest. Testosterone elicits sexual motivation in the amygdala and the preoptic area of the hypothalamus. Hormones determine sex drive. For men, the more testosterone they have, the hornier they are. For women, testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone make them horny. Estrogens and androgens work together to enhance sexual arousal in a woman. Women have a higher libido during the follicular, early in the cycle, and ovulatory, mid-cycle, phases of the menstrual cycle. They have the lowest libido during the luteal, late in the cycle, phase. This cycle is due to estrogen release. Androgens are secreted by both the ovaries and adrenal glands in women. This testosterone makes women horny. If you don't believe me, try a testosterone patch or try them herbal supplements that help raise testosterone levels. The main sex hormones are Dopamine, the reward hormone. Testosterone. Prolactin, the hormone of satiation. Oxytocin, the cuddle hormone. Androgen receptors. Phenylethylamine, P. When we first fall in love we become bonded by rising P, oxytocin, and dopamine levels. When we are sexually aroused, our dopamine level rises further. When we orgasm, we have a flood of dopamine in our brain. After orgasm, dopamine levels fall sharply. This reaction tends to be immediate in males and delayed in females. Prolactin levels rise. Androgen receptors fall after orgasm. Oxytocin levels fall after conventional orgasm but remaining in close contact may help to counter this drop and sustain oxytocin levels. People fall out of love because they stop getting the endorphin rush after seeing their spouse day after day and the spouse stops trying to look good and alluring. Reuniting.info slash science slash sex underscore and underscore addiction. Oxytocin nasal spray exists, love pill not sex pill. Scientists are messing around with oxytocin, giving it to animals, watching what they do.
somebody created an oxytocin nasal spray. Some guy on the radio said when a couple goes for marital therapy, they each take a sniff of oxytocin nasal spray which we presume makes them more loving towards each other but it's not that simple. Imagine an angry husband or a husband with a sexy new girlfriend. He wants out. No spray is gonna help that. They also talked about dopamine and vasopressin. Somebody wants to create a love pill. There are forces stronger than hormones like the human mind which makes decisions that go against hormones all the time. Love is natural. Don't mess with mother nature. It's all experimental right now. There is no love pill coming on the market anytime soon. Falling out of spellbound love. Falling out of spellbound love is very predictable because it's a normal physiological response based on hormones released in our bodies. When we first fall in love, our brains are bathed in neurochemicals that make us feel good all the time. This usually lasts anywhere from 18 months to 3 years then one of two things will happen. You'll either fall into a kind of friendship relationship. You'll grow distant. Women can love a man steadily over the years but a man usually swings wildly. The initial attraction goes then he either decides to stay with you because he likes you as a person or looks for a new flame to rock his world all over again. Women should be ready for a man to go from passionate love to indifference. All you can do is be a good person, a good friend and keep trying to be sexy, romantic and erotic. The character of the man will determine what he does. The law of biology pushes a man to constantly seek new, young women to have sex with. He's fighting his nature by sticking with one woman for life. You have to keep recreating passion and excitement. Chapter 3 The Brain Chemistry of Sex and Love 3 the biological imperative. I was a well-intentioned young guy who bought what I was sold about monogamous love being absolutely necessary in order for a human being to be happy so I spent my young adult years looking for it, trying a number of monogamous relationships in order to get that feeling of happiness portrayed in the media in the form of easy breezy, loving, soulmate relationships but then a few things happened to me. First off I was introduced to the swinging lifestyle where I, as a muscular, handsome young man had access to a number of women who wanted to play with me. I realized that I fantasized about either naked women or having sex with different women several times every day. If I'm like this, there's no reason for me to think that other normal men are any different than me which is why I don't believe all those men out there trying to act like model family men because they're just as depraved as I am in the privacy of their minds. I read an article about the Coolidge effect then some articles about the hormones or chemistry of sex and realized I was biologically pre-wired to have sex with as many women as possible and move on, not staying to help raise the kids. I realized that even if you're in love with a girl, she starts to bore you quickly sexually. A man was born to constantly seek out variety in sex which means a variety of sex partners. I looked around and realized the big lie or deception about monogamous relationships. Very few people have soulmate type relationships, very few men are paternalistic, most couples are either putting up a front about how happy they are as a couple or they're not faking anything but just living in a generic superficial type of lukewarm relationship. The Institute of Monogamous Marriage is mostly a self-delusion and a put-on created a long time ago to tame men down and manage them. Porn and the sex work slash escort industry are multi-billion dollar businesses yet we, as a society, live in denial and continue to insist that happiness is all about a monogamous relationship. In my world, I have no issue with monogamy but I have issue with a society that claims to be free that says I can't have several spouses if I want and I can't go to a neighborhood brothel to buy sex whenever I want. We're a bunch of self-deluded hypocrites living a big lie. I just have to look around at all the couples I see anywhere and I can tell there ain't great love or sex there. Men are biologically wired to see out young, fertile females to have sex with. It's not just the 0.8 waist to hip ratio. It's the freshness of youth that I can always spot just like I can always spot a woman over 45 years old. To me, very. Very few women over 45 have the kind of bodies or faces that I'm physically attracted to. Don't blame me. Blame the creator God that made me this way. 
men are born to be driven to fertilize as many females as possible. That's a man's true nature. Monogamy is something society created to try to control men and make them paternal. The Coolidge effect slash quick renewable virility. The Coolidge effect is that when a new female is introduced, the male rat wants to have sex with her but after a day or two, he's bored of her. His sex hormones revive to become sexually active when he sees a new attractive female. On a visit to a farm, President Coolidge's wife was shown a rooster who could copulate with hens all day long day after day. She asked the farmer to let the president know about this whereupon President Coolidge asked, does he do that with the same hen? No, sir, answered the farmer. Please tell that to Mrs. Coolidge, said the president. To my way of thinking, this is a great argument why monogamy does not work. The Coolidge effect been observed in all tested male and female animals. Female rodents flirt more and present themselves more attractively when observed by new males than in the presence of males with whom they had already sex. Reuniting.info slash science slash Coolidge underscore effect. The antidote to the biological imperative is oxytocin. A close bonding loving relationship elevates oxytocin which is good for health and well-being. Nature endowed us with oxytocin which is released in the presence of love and affection and strengthens the intimate bond between people and animals. You must focus on love, romance, cuddling and non-intercourse sexual fun and foreplay because if you focus on getting orgasms, you'll tire of one woman very quickly and look around for porn, escorts, strippers or other lovers that you find anywhere. There is no such thing as a partner you feel an intense passion for that can never fade. If your partner is really, cool, loving, fun and affectionate and they show it every day, you got a chance but even still, your partner will age and look dumpy while your sexual desires for fresh, young, good looking people doesn't change. Honeymoons cool off all the time, everywhere. The problem is that sex, passion and pleasure get satisfied and as time passes, you're less enthralled with your lover and need a new lover or a new sexual stimulus in order to get excited sexually again. Nature created us to mix our gene pool and that's what we do. As a relationship goes on, sexual desire between a couple declines in both men and women. It's just nature telling us to find somebody new to mix your genes with to create to baby with unique genes. Sex hormones make us more horny when we come across new attractive people of the opposite sex and get bored after we have sex with them but at the same time we release oxytocin during sex which helps bond us as couples so it's basically a big contradiction. If you want to keep a pair bond strong, the lesson is that it's not about sex anymore after a while, it's about doing loving things together that release oxytocin. It's called the cuddle hormone because it makes you cuddle and bond more. The lesson is to focus on cuddling and love more than on intercourse sex if you want to keep a marriage strong. It might be a boring life with only one partner but this is how you keep marriages going, have love, cuddling and romance more so than intercourse sex. This greatly helps to sustain oxytocin levels without producing the high than the low neurochemical cycles of orgasm. Neuroscientists tell us that after we have sex with the same person a hundred or so times, there's a natural tendency to want to separate and leave to look for the next lover. Our hormones want us to get a dopamine lift which we get from coming across a potential new sex partner. If you want to be a happy couple, you have to focus on love making without orgasm. You have to focus on a spiritual soulmate union as opposed to a sexual one because if a man has sex with his wife, his true nature says she's done, she bores me now. I need another female to have sex with. The only couples who manage to have a truly great relationship are those who try to become close, loving friends in the spiritual sense. Nobody else can be a happy couple. If you don't talk much or play much together except for intercourse sex, your mind wanders to fantasies of sex with other women. Monogamy is culturally induced. Sex with multiple lovers is natural. Nature has given us some tools that help us bond in a relationship with one other person. It's loving, nurturing, romantic, sharing activities. If you do this together all the time, you can develop a peer bond. If you just have sex and not much else, 
you don't develop this higher order loving bond so the relationship will be lukewarm at best while the guy fantasizes about sex with different women. You have to activate true love by doing loving things together which release dopamine, oxytocin, and other hormones to cement the love connection. Your mate has to give you joy and comfort beyond just sex. At the same time, women are naturally maternalistic but you hope that the guy develops a bond with his kids to give him further incentive to view this monogamous relationship with love and affection. The guy wants sex and he wants love too. The only way love wins is if he gets enough good feelings from the wife and kids to override his natural desire to have sex with all kinds of different women. He won't stop thinking about it but his mind will enable him to choose love and repress his wild sex side. For men, nature says keep having orgasms. The only way to counteract it is if the wife is really loving and the kids have a loving bond with the father. If the wife and kids don't have a strong connection to the guy, he's fantasizing about sex with different women, masturbating while he watches porn and thinking about hiring an escort or meeting a girl for casual sex over the internet. The more porn you watch, the less your wife can satisfy you sexually because of desensitization. If you want love, focus on bonding with warm affection. If you're true to your true nature, you're a sexual hedonist. If you want to be in a monogamous relationship, you must actively repress some of your sex drive. That's the way it is. No man in a loving marriage has a full sex life. You have to repress some of it for the sake of love unless your wife is fine with you watching porn and masturbating all the time. Kinsey advised, tell your sadomasochistic friends to observe great caution. The human body adjusts rapidly and the levels are capable of escalating rapidly. This means that you get bored by sex with just your wife and if you watch porn and read erotic stories, you're priming yourself for a variety of sex with a variety of people. You get impulsive about it. This is why men love porn. It feeds their desire for more sexual stimulation. The brain is wired on the primal reward system. Sex, food, and intoxicants give us our most intense pleasures so it's natural to want more of them. Whenever I see a fat guy, I know that he replaced his primal love of sex with food as his primary pleasure. A lot of pacified married guys get fat because they're not in a position where they can freely watch porn and masturbate so they sit with the wife and kids, watch TV, and eat. Repression is bad but so is an extreme desire to have sex all the time. It leads to a person out of control in trying to get more orgasms. We have to balance ourselves. I'm a sexual hedonist but I'm not a sex maniac because I live to release all my natural energy, 75% of which is inspired, physical, creative, intellectual. Only 10 to 15% of my life is dedicated to sex because of my need to release inspired aesthetic energy. If you're thinking and doing sex and lust all the time, you're not in balance with your whole self which is inspired, sexual, loving and practical. That's why it's good to live a full life and not just focus on sex or love. When you're inspired, you get your dopamine fix from the creative physical activities you do. There's enough left over to enjoy sex without overdosing on it. If you want monogamous love, focus on warm, affectionate bonding activities as a source of inspiration to give you your dopamine fix. Nature made us seek different sex partners in order to constantly mix the gene pool. You have to fight this natural tendency by creating romance and friendship in your relationship all the time. The bottom line is that nature makes us seek different sex partners all the time to get that dopamine fix from sex but at the same time, it gives us enough oxytocin so that men can develop enough of a bond with a woman and kids to hang around and help raise them. If there's stress in your life, all bets are off. Stress can either make you lose interest in sex and slash or love or it can make you go manic in searching for them to get the dopamine fix that will relieve your stress for a little while. The best life is a no-stress life. Culture your love life so you have a warm, supportive friend there when your life starts to fall apart medically, career-wise, money-wise, etc. In the end, figure out how to release good levels of oxytocin by loving and being affectionate with someone or a pet and get your dopamine fix through orgasms and inspired activities and you'll live a strong, happy, healthy life.
rkalitka.de slash oxytocin2 underscore us.html Things to do to cement the love bond Some loving, bonding, affectionate things to do are Be friends as well as lovers Be playful and adventurous Bonding-centered lovemaking Caress Compliments Cradling your partner's head and torso Create a loving, warm atmosphere Cuddle Dancing Do exercises, meditation, tai chi, or yoga together Do romantic things Do something nice for him slash her Don't allow yourself to be indoctrinated by the media which is constantly pushing sex and youth at us Live by your own standard Enjoy each other's company Focus on peace and love Foot massage Foreplay Forgiving Gazing into each other's eyes Getting high together Give gifts Go to church together Help him slash her with work Holding hands Hugging Kissing Laugh together Lay in the spoon's position Lay your head and ear over the other's heart and listen. Laying together. Light-hearted playfulness. Listening. Live a relaxed lifestyle. Look up at the stars together. Love play. Loving intercourse. Massage each other. Mutual kindness and affection. Practice deep breathing together. Prolonged skin contact. Relax together. Shower together. Singing together. Sit by a fire together. Skin to skin contact. Sleep skin to skin. Smiles. Swim at night together. The man should be more gentle, the woman should be more aggressive in bed. Touch. Try tantric love methods. Walking together. Watch romantic movies. Your immune system gives off a scent that tells potential lovers how healthy you are. The scent of a male mouse reveals the state of his health to his female lover. She determines how healthy he is and decides whether to get pregnant or not. The implication is that some female animal species can sense the strength of the immune systems of their lovers and based on that can somehow decide whether they'll allow a pregnancy to happen or not. Female mice look for males whose immune system genes smell different from theirs therefore adding a diversity of immune system genes to the genes of the babies. The question is how much does this apply to humans if at all? Look up Trees Linders Zufall who did these experiments. In 1996, Klaus Wedekind, a zoologist at Bern University in Switzerland, conducted his stinky t-shirt study where he gave women t-shirts from different men to smell. He found that women preferred the scent of men whose immune systems were not like their own based on smell. The lesson is to not wash your natural sweat scent away or cover it over with too much cologne. On some level, people smell others which contributes to who they choose as a mate. Scientists say that these pheromone detectors in our noses aren't used anymore because evolution has rendered them useless but what do they really know about our primal instincts? A lot of women say they're turned on by their man's smell. When they feel lonely and smell some of his clothes, they feel better. How do you divorce-proof a relationship? There is no absolute way to divorce-proof a relationship. There are techniques that people use. The best technique is to be good to best friends. It's hard to become best friends because couples often fight for domination and there's often the sex thing which is used as a tool in this fight. Don't fall so much in love that you give everything to her. It gives her power over you. Be more aloof. Don't smother her with love. No matter what, keep a hold of your individual identity. That way you got you if the relationship fails. Have money saved up for a possible breakup. Don't have high expectations that will be dashed because they're so high. This is very, very common, especially for women. Be delighted when it sometimes turns out better than expected. Love tends to make us see another as someone extraordinary without flaws but they go to the bathroom and smell bad. They get angry too. Everybody comes across people who they are attracted to or they them. All attractions are transient but it's enough to break a marriage. Traveling salesmen, business executives, etc., 
are all prone to encounter someone else they're attracted to. In any community, anyone involved in the church is open to meeting lots of possibilities. Love and sex stimulate different parts of the brain. Primal people say love is really just sex and lust personalized to one person. Arthur Aaron of the State University of New York Stony Brook took brain scans of people looking at a picture of their loved ones and compared them to brain scans of people sexually aroused. The brain scans only partially overlapped. Feelings of love light up the brain regions rich in dopamine mostly on the right side of the brain. Feelings of initial attraction based on looks produced brain scans where the left side of the brain is lit up. The longer somebody has been in a good, loving relationship, the bigger the area of the brain that lights up. Chapter 4 Sex Science Websites Love Chemistry Websites Slash Sex Science Websites KinseyInstitute.org Slash Resources Slash Education.html Sciencebase.com slash science hyphen blog slash tag slash sex. Gutmacher.org slash pub slash journal slash 3425902.html. Psychcentral.com. Brainsxmatters.com. Endorphin.org. En.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash oxytocin. Frasitologi.org slash love.htm, the sexual chemistry of love. Hugthemonkey.com slash 2006 slash 10 slash love underscore chemistry underscore underscore 1 dot html. Humanchemistry.net. Institute for Suility.com. LiveScience.com. DivineCaroline.com slash 22081 slash 76045 hyphen kiss hyphen hyphen science hyphen sex, why we kiss, the science of sex life.umd.edu slash biology slash Borjalab, the collection of highly detailed information on courtship and male mating success. Marriagescience.com My-wild-side.com Nature.com NewScientist.com NVSH.nl slash skill slash orgasm.htm, the brain in love and lust. Oxytocinforum.com people.howstuffworks.com slash love6.htm scarletine.com seductionlabs.org slash 2007 slash 05 slash 08 slash the hyphen biochemistry hyphen of hyphen love sexreset arkhandacity.com youramazingbrain.org.uk slash lovesx slash sciencelove.htm orgasm and the brain websites Paradise-engineering.com slash brain slash index.htm, the orgasmic brain, clinical case studies of controversial neurological research into the brain's pleasure systems. Mindhacks.com slash blog slash 2008 slash 02 slash orgasm underscore and underscore the underscore brain.html. Scientificamerican.com, the orgasmic mind, the neurological roots of sexual pleasure. Nerve.com slash regulars slash lives work slash sx in the brain, sex on the brain. Science.howstuffworks.com slash environmental slash life slash inside hyphen the hyphen mind slash human hyphen brain slash brain hyphen during hyphen orgasm 2.htm. Actionlove.com. Reuniting.info slash science slash sex underscore in underscore the underscore brain. Mixingmemory.blogspot.com slash 2005 slash 06 slash orgasm hyphen in hyphen brain hyphen or hyphen porn hyphen for dot html. Newscientist.com, orgasm and the brain. Psychologytoday.com, orgasm and the brain. Planetsex.blogspot.com. Huffingtonpost.com, female orgasm video. Medicalnewstoday.com, female orgasm brain activity.